Good day, everybody. This is Kenny Jang coming at you again. And today, in the hot seat, we've got a good friend, Joe Sangal. Um, thank you so much for being with us, Joe, today. Fired up. Thanks so much, brother. Uh, it is great to be with you today, especially because the conversation that we've been having with a lot of churches and pastors recently center around the taboo topic of money, right? Giving yeah. and money. Um, and I know that you are in that space. You're talking about it every day, actually. So why don't you help share with our audience today a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you help churches in particular. Yeah. Well, my name is Joseph Sengel, and I founded an organization called I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. And I like to say, people, uh, if you're saying I is broke, you're failing grammar class, and it's not fun being broke. And I got unbroke, and I did it by following God's Word and applying His principles. And as I went through the process, you know, I have an engineering degree from Purdue University and got my MBA, and I was still broke. And I was wondering, could I, was it that difficult? And I realized I was thinking too hard that it's really the reading of God's word and the application of it. And uh, I started finding all this scripture about money. And I found out that God's word is not silent on it, but my pastor had been silent on it. <laughs> and therefore I was educated by all those great marketers from Madison Avenue. And uh, I spent it all, I had the spiritual gift of making money disappear. And uh, I got deliverance and I'm on a one-man quest to help pastors get over their fear of talking about money because all their people, they make money decisions all day long. Yes. And I want to help them make really good God-honoring ones. So let's get into that because I think it is it's still, even today in 2017, a little bit of a taboo topic for people are, these pastors and church leaders that we talk to, they're afraid to bring it up. They feel like they're begging for money. They feel like it's out of place. It's not etiquette. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, I had lunch with a pastor this week who said, he literally doesn't have any data on the how much money people give in his church. They they put up a, a security wall so that he literally doesn't know. So what is the first step? If people here listening today want to embrace a culture of generosity, um, mm -hmm. how do they bring up money and tithing and giving if they've never if they've never preached on it, on it before, right? Which yeah. is very yeah. possible. They don't do it in classes or workshops or seminars or in the Bible studies. What's the first step? How do you bring it up for the first time from the pulpit or from the stage? Well, that's a great question. And I would say they need to start with their why. Why do they want to talk about it? Because if it's just to get them to give, that's not an appropriate right. why. If it's, I want to teach them what God's word says about all of money, giving, but also saving debt, planning, investing, if I want to see them win and fund the dreams God has placed in their life and be able to fund the shared dream of the church, then when they get to that place that that is their why, that's when they need to approach the church with it. I love that. And so every time they should talk about money, they need a lot of pastors, when they hear us say, you need to preach on money, they immediately, something in the word replaces it with the word giving, <laughs> preach on giving. But that's only, you know, 10% if you're giving, teaching the tithe, that's only 10% of the resources God has placed in their hands. Right. We need to make sure you speak to the entire pocket, the other 90% as well. And so I would start by talking about their goal as a leader to help people live a fully funded life, being able to do exactly what God has called them to do, regardless of its cost or income potential. And then go from that point that says, I'm going to talk about giving. Yes, that is God's word. We should be givers. I'm going to talk about the rest too, because I want to help you live the best one and only life that you have. I love that. That is such a critical insight, right? That if you're preaching and giving, you're only talking about 10% of their daily living and their right what they go through. And you need to talk about the holistic aspect. Now, um, some people have an allergic reaction to thinking that money and stewardship is a part of spiritual discipline. What's yes. your take on it? Well, I, I just say, how can you say you love the Lord and not be a giver? How can you say that he died and paid the ultimate price that we can have liberty? And, you know, I, I've heard it once said, how can I stare at a bloodstained cross and say, what is the minimum I can give? You know what I'm saying? So it says, Jesus said, Matthew 6, 21, that wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if you say you love the Lord, if you say your heart is with the Lord, it will compel you to be a giver. Gotcha. Money follows it. And so in terms of preaching, you are saying that, hey, look, we're not going to talk about 
actually giving to the church, that is not the focus or the end goal or the call to action at the end of the first time you're talking about it. That's what right. Specific, what's the net takeaway of that first talk or the first sermon that someone's going to give? I think it's a net takeaway this to ask the question, are you truly honoring the Lord with everything he's placed in your hands? And I would challenge every person within my church to spend an hour this next week reviewing their last month's spending. Pull out the credit card statements, the bank statements, and say, in an audit, would someone convict you, which means having been found guilty of living a generous life and of being a wise manager? I would start there. I wow. love the story that Jesus shares in Parable of the Talents in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, where he talks about the three managers. And it says in there, each according to their ability, they were giving differing amounts. Yes. And if people want more to manage, increase their ability to manage it, it says the Lord pays attention to that. Gotcha. Shifting the gears a little bit about the specific offering. Uh, one of the things that I'm a big proponent about, and I think that people miss is that the offering part of the service is one of the most strategic moments of your ability to influence the daily living of your congregants. How powerful can that be? Have you seen any difference, tangible differences Absolutely. when, when people pursue that? It's a massive difference. Uh, some people call it offering prep, uh, but really it is an opportunity to speak about money 52 times a year in a positive, productive, spiritual principle manner. And so we encourage people to change it up each week so that it doesn't blend into the woodwork. Many churches fall into routine and it's, oh yeah, we need to do that. But really, giving is one of the most tangible forms of worship that we can do. It's really us saying, I can give this and believe that with God's blessing on the rest, I can live a better life. It's the tangible form of that, saying, I trust the Lord. And so I would encourage every leader that's listening to this, watching this, that you should think through and spend as much time planning the offering moment as you do planning the message. It's that important. And one of the biggest hesitations is, is that if you are constantly putting up calls to action about giving and money, that the, the reaction is going to be negative. And you're going to be seen as someone who's greedy and self-serving. And so how do you avoid that perception on the, on the receiving end? Yeah, that's great. So again, if the leader feels like that is what they're doing, they probably are doing that. They need to reevaluate, reevaluate their why. Uh, but on the other side, the way that you you speak about giving, it needs to be about the mission and the vision and how giving has helped accomplish it and being the attitude of gratitude to tell people, I am so grateful that you've chosen to be a part of the vision here at Cornerstone Church, right. at Cross Point Church. But let me tell you how your giving dollar makes a difference in our community and connecting the dots that these dollars really have equaled life change. And when you do that, it actually encourages people. It helps them understand there's a return on investment mm -hmm. and ROI here. And they know for a fact, this is the greatest place that I can give my dollar. Tell us a little bit more about your ministry in particular and how you actually help churches accomplish that tactically, logistically. What are the resources that you are able to provide? Yeah, well, I feel like there's four spokes of the wheel that fund churches. And we're serving all four of them. So one of them is personal stewardship. So if I was broke, now I'm not. We have personal finance group studies. Think of Dave Ramsey type studies. I go on site, teach stewardship messages, teach two hour classes, and then have DVD based studies resources. The next one is enjoy stewardship solutions. And that's capital campaigns. That's a sacrificial pocket. You know, that sac times of sacrifice come and go. And so that helps churches raise big time money when they're raising half of a year's budget or more. That's when we can help. And then the third pocket is the regular giving pocket. And I started that with somebody you and I both know, Michael Lukaszewski, an organization called Fully Funded. It's an online coaching membership where churches have gathered together, learning how to implement regular giving uh, systems within their church. The fourth pocket is estate planning. And that's talking to people about their assets of what are they gonna do with them when they leave and how they can still have kingdom impact even beyond their natural life. And so we help with all four of those categories and the greatest place to start really is a conversation with I was broke, now I'm not, or with Enjoy Stewardship 
or fully funded, whichever category a pastor needs. We'd love to help them with that. Now, most of the churches in this country now, the State of the Union is that over 50% of the churches are 100 or less in attendees. That's right. Um, and then you're probably talking solo pastor ministries, right? Is the pastor himself or herself the one that really should be the spokesperson, the steward, the facilitator of these conversations? Or is it um, a treasurer, a finance person, a volunteer, is it an elder, somebody else that should be the point person for these types of conversations? That is a great question. And the right answer is it depends. Um, it depends upon the past culture of the church and how people have responded to that culture. So if the pastor feels confident talking about money and can answer those questions, uh, then it should be the pastor. You know, they're kind of the CEO of the organization. Right. They're the public face of the ministry. They are the chief vision caster in most cases. So it's most compelling when it's from the leader. However, many pastors in smaller churches have a very strong uh, business leader who's a leader of their board right. uh, who can speak very eloquently to this topic and can be a very wise shepherd helping people honor the Lord with their resources. So if that's the case, then it's okay if it's that person as well. Gotcha. Now, um, so I'm glad that you're, you're advocating for both. It really depends on the context. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, this past week, I had lunch with a pastor who shared with me that he literally doesn't know anything about the finances of his church. Um, is that wise? Is that something that you think needs to be cordoned off from the rest of the, you know, the pastor? He's deep in the word and preaching in his ministry and the rest of the yep. flock are really concerned about the business of the church, the expansion of the church, et cetera. Is, what's your, what's your opinion on that? I, I would argue strongly the pastor should know Proverbs 27, 23 says a shepherd knows the status of his flocks. The pastor is a shepherd and giving is an absolute outward sign of a person's heart condition. And the, so it, it, I know in some cases, if the pastor knows they would be fired. So if that's the case, I don't want to get a pastor fired. I would say someone must know. And I would start by saying anybody who's on staff or in a key volunteer leadership position, that somebody needs to know that they are giving generously because everything rises and falls on leadership. Dr. John Maxwell, right? And if the leader and the leaders of the church are not leading the way in this thing called generosity, you cannot expect for that vision, that mission to be fully funded. Wow, that's that's pretty powerful. I think that's good guidance too. And I think it also always comes down to the confidence of the pastor, um, what happens, and many pastors are not, right? Seminary didn't train us like an MBA like That's you and I have, right? It, it's a part of the profile that the pastor needs to understand. Where do they go for resources to become, to come up to speed on the financial aspect of the business? I would say every single pastor can sign up for our online class for free. And so I Was Broke Now I'm Not has a year long course with coaching and mentoring and lessons. And I would give it to any pastor or senior pastor that contacts us, we would give it to them for free. Wow, love um, it. And I'll answer the questions. My passion, you know, there's too many broke pastors and most pastors, especially those of 100 or for less, sure. 200 or less, they don't go into ministry to make millions of dollars. They do it because of passion and a calling. Most of them are bivocational and they're very tired. And my goal is to be able to help them become liberated in their finances so that they can solely focus on God's calling. And finances generally is the number one barrier from that church growing to the 500 mark. I love it. And that's what I love about your ministry. Your heart really comes through authentically because that's, that's where your passion is. You really want to help that pastor, the leader, get whole in their own finances so that they can actually focus on all the other things in ministry as well. Well, thank you Absolutely. so much for stopping by today. If someone wants to get in touch with you personally, what's the best way to do that? Social media, email, website? Give us your digits here. Go to I was broke, now I'm not com. Just Google it. I was broke, now I'm not, and click contact Joe, and uh, that will go right to me and my team, and we'll be in touch very soon. We'd love to help any leader be able to fund vision. It's our passion. Thanks so much, Joseph, to really just stop by. I hope that you have some time to revisit with us later to go deeper on some other topics, but I love what you're doing and everything that you're doing for the kingdom. Thanks for the opportunity. So blessed. Thanks, Kenny.